Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with uh, Chapter 5. This is Management 2, and we are now going over entrepreneurship and new venture management. Uh, learning outcomes or discuss the nature of entrepreneurship, describe the role of entrepreneurship in society, understand the major issues involved in choosing strategies for small firms and the role of international management in entrepreneurship, uh, discuss the structural changes unique to entrepreneurial firms, and understand the detriments uh, uh, determinants of uh, the performance of small firms. Uh, all great things to go over and discuss. Uh, putting the Greek in the Greek yogurt, you guys have got to uh, read this story and check out the video that I have on Chibani and uh, how this guy came up, uh, you know, with his uh, great business that is still striving uh, today. Uh, so if you want to be an entrepreneur, it's a great story to, to check into and, uh, and get motivated behind. So read through the story, watch the video that I've posted as well. Don't just watch the video and uh, go from there. So let's talk about the nature of entrepreneurship. So this is the process of planning, organizing, and operating, and assuming the risk of a business venture. So the biggest thing is the risk part. And what do you risk when you're an entrepreneur? You risk, you risk your time and you risk your money, both of which are very valuable. Entrepreneur is someone who engages in entrepreneurship. Uh, small business and typically when you're an entrepreneur you start off in, in a small business just like the guy from Giovanni got a small business alone so technically we start off as a small business uh, it's a business that is privately owned by one individual or small group of individuals and has sales and assets that are not large enough to meaningfully uh, influence its environment right so if you know if I come out with a yogurt company and like 35 people are buying my yogurt I'm not meaningfully uh, influencing or affecting the, the market so it's not any, you know, anything a big competitor has to really look out for. So, uh, so that's what they talk about when they say small businesses. So, so these are small businesses, uh, uh, percentage of all U.S. businesses. Um, you see a number of employees under 20. Look, look at how much higher that is than the rest of these, right? So, and especially in California, that's the king of, uh, of small business. And then uh, percentage of all uh, U.S. workers, uh, when you look at the, the number of employees, uh, you, you see that that, you know, is a little bit different. Uh, so, you know, great graphs to look and, you know, get a true depiction of what's going on. So the importance of small business in the United States, approximately 86% of all U.S. businesses employ fewer than 20 people, 86%. Another 11.7% employ between 20 and 99. In contrast, only about 2.1% uh, employed between 100 and 499 workers and another 0.2%, very minuscule, employ 500 or more. But those are very large companies. 24.5% uh, of all U.S. workers are employed by firms with fewer than 20 people. Uh, another 29.6% of working firms that employ between 20 and 99. 25.5% of U.S. workers are employed by firms with 100 to 499 employees. And another 20.3% work for businesses uh, that employ 500 or more total employees. Right. So when you look at that, then it looks a lot more even. And that's the second uh, graph right here it looks a lot more even uh, when you see it in terms of, of you know how many how many actual workers uh, work there so you know just a very interesting thing to look at uh, when you think about you know small business and you know job creation and then also the, the amount of jobs that are created through corporations as well um, so if you check this out job losses so check this out uh, and job gains Barclays minus 12,000 jobs. Merkin Company, that's a you know pharmaceutical. J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, IBM, Aetna, Eli Lilly. Uh, a friend who works there. AIG, know some people work there as well. Uh, Gains, uh, you know who's who's hiring people? Well, Kroger's hiring people. They're plus 7,000. Toys R Us, Caterpillar, AT&T, Amazon. I you know could figure that one. Motorola, CarMax, Ford, Nissan. These are all you know, places that are hiring. So if you look at that, you say, hey, you know, maybe that's somewhere that I would like to, you know, to go to get a job because they seem like they're pretty steady. Probably not anybody on this list right here. Uh, representative jobs uh, created uh, and lost in 2013. So all businesses create and eliminate jobs. Because of their size, the magnitude of the job creation and elimination is especially uh, pronounced in bigger business. This figure provided several representation, several representative uh, examples of job creation and elimination at several big U.S. businesses during 2013. So, for example, while Barclays cut 12,000 jobs and Merck cut 
8,500. Kroger added 7,000 jobs and Toys R Us added 6,750 during the same period. So, you know, definitely want to be on the side of the, the companies that are that are adding jobs. And a lot of times some of those could be taking jobs away because of innovation, right? Could be technology saying we've got this new technology replacing these jobs. And, you know, that's a step in the direction that they would like to go. Uh, but, you know, us as, you know, individuals who live in the United States would like to see companies that are employing more people, uh, you know, not just the technology. And of course, there's importance of big business, uh, you know, fuels the economy, uh, all the corporations throughout the United States. Uh, but uh, there's also, a, you know, big importance of, uh, of small business as well. So uh, if you see here, you look at the different types of small businesses. So you have other services, retailing, construction, finance and insurance, wholesaling, transportation, manufacturing, uh, just, you know, just like a split uh, right there that shows, you know, what the most, you know, majority of the jobs are, but services, see how much services are, uh, because services are very popular and they're, they're things that we need. Uh, you know, it's not just products, you're not just selling a computer, but you're also selling, uh, you know, um, you know, a virus service that keeps the computer clean. So small businesses are especially strong in certain industries such as retailing and services. On the other hand, there are relatively fewer small businesses in industries such as transportation and manufacturing, right? Because how are you going to be a small business in manufacturing? You need a lot of overhead, need a lot of capital, big buildings, a lot of machinery. Uh, the differences are primarily the result of factors such as investment costs necessary to enter these markets. Uh, in these industries. For example, starting a new airline will require the purchase of a large passenger airport, airport gates, and hiring expensive uh, set of employees, right? I can't just open up, uh, you know, um, it's not like Soul Plan, I can just open up a, you know, an airline and just say, hey, you know, me and my buddy, we're going to get together and we're going to do go do this without a large uh, chunk of, of money. It just doesn't work like that. All right, so a new model for going green. So sustainability matters. Once you guys to definitely read that. Definitely a supporter of going green, helping the environment, uh, corporate uh, sustainability. Uh, you see this right here. Those solar panels going up. I don't know if any guys saw that funny. Uh, um, uh, it's an Audi commercial, and it's a lady, and she's you know uh, riding a bike from the store where she picked up her groceries. That's very e environmentally friendly. Uh, another lady, she's got a chicken in her yard, and she's you know getting eggs to make an omelet for breakfast. Other guys putting like a sticker on his Prius, uh, and uh, other guys like this putting uh, solar panels on the on the roof. And then another guy he comes screaming, you know, flying through the neighborhood in the Audi. And he turns and he flips and he backs up into the you know into the driveway. And they're looking like, what's this guy doing in our e-friendly, you know, environment or e-friendly neighborhood? And he gets out and he hits the button and the thing comes out the front. And that's, you know, where you plug the electric car in and he just gives the, the girl on the bike a little like, yeah, what's up? You know, and she's like, yeah, what's up back to him? Because, you know, they're making the car like, hey, it's a fully sustainable car, but it's also cool. So it's getting like the best of both worlds, which is which is a great thing. And you see a lot of that, you know, you see here with the, um, you know, with the solar panels. Uh, I have solar panels. I, I'm big proponent. I think they're great. Uh, my neighbor came down, she walked down the street, asked me about their solar panels, and I told him how, you know, how much I liked them. He decided to go with the company I went with, got a, you know, $500 referral fee, works out great. So, you know, I always tell people like, hey, you know, if you're interested, uh, you know, I let them know about, you know, what, what's the good, the bad, and the ugly about them. Uh, but, you know, they don't work out for everybody, but they do work out for some. But, uh, you know, as you see these in residences, you also see the solar panels in a lot of on a lot of companies and uh you know uh it, it's just you know smart for them helps with their electricity bill but then they also get a you know pretty good uh kickback from uh, uncle sam uh so some more on sustainability matters uh make sure you read the thing all the way through uh you know it's uh you know very important to you know go green and you know help the environment uh stay nice and nice and fresh and clean for for everyone who comes uh comes after us um so if you look at these, this is just the standard, uh, you know, economies of scale, uh, you know, so these are number of units produced, so standard economy uh, scale curve, uh, and the change in technology shift of uh, the economy, uh, economies of scale and may uh, make small business manufacturing possible, right? So they're saying because of certain technology, maybe this is something that is actually going to be possible. Uh, so ec economies of scale and small business organizations. So small business sometimes find it difficult to compete in manufacturing related industries because of the economies of scale associated with the plants. Right. So this is big capital plants, equipment and technology as shown in the firms that produce a large number of units uh, can do so at a lower cost per unit. At the same time, however, new forms of technology occasionally cause economies of scale uh, curve to shift. 
uh, as illustrated in B. Uh, in this case, smaller firms may be able to compete more effectively with larger ones uh, because of the drop in per unit manufacturing cost. So if you come up with something that makes a box that is very small as opposed to something that makes a box that is very large, then maybe, just maybe, uh, you'll be able to uh, do something different as a, as a small business. But typically right now, uh, small businesses just aren't in manufacturing. Um, so established market this is a market in which several firms uh, compete according to relatively well-defined criteria, right? So it's established market. Everybody knows the criteria. Everybody knows what you need to have. If you have a laptop, you got to have a webcam right it's got to have Wi-Fi capability on it certain things that you need to have if you don't have those things you're not going to be successful in that established market uh, you know it's just just these common sense things and then even beyond that then you need even more to really you know attract your, you know attract people to your to your product and or services that's why you need your marketing department so you have your niche uh, segment of a market not currently being exploited right so it's something that somebody hasn't really put up in everybody's face and said hey I can do this well, you know, why don't you, you know, come come buy these services or buy these products from me? Uh, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, just things that people haven't thought of. Like when they talked about the fact that McDonald's was, I think they said McDonald's was the first to say, hey, you're going to pay for your food before you get it, right? Just think about it. If you're, you know, a little bit older in yesteryear, you didn't pay for your food before you got it. You came, you ate the food, and then you paid, right? McDonald's did pay for your food, then we'll give it to you, right? So just think about their different type of, uh, a business model right so niche is simply a segment market that is not currently being exploited in general small business entrepreneurs and uh and businesses are better at discovering these niches uh better than larger uh organized organizations uh so our example david tran launched a new hot sauce product sriracha hot chili sauce because the he thought existing products were a bit too mild think about that right he said this is too mild for me so i'm going to produce it and then guess what? We all, all the rest of us liked it too. Well, maybe not all of us, but I liked it. Even when I, you know, it's even in Subway, right? I go there, I get my sandwich. I'm like, man, you know, if it's not a, you know, typically I get a veggie, but if it's like a tuna or something, I say, hey, put the sriracha sauce on. I love it because it's spicy and I really like it. Uh, leading the way, Samuel Adams. Uh, so check, check that out. Uh, not just a great uh, beer company, but a good example of good solid uh, business. So I want you to check that out. You can see from their commercials that they produce that, they're a little bit different than the typical uh, beer company. So a uh, very interesting story. Be sure to read that. Um, first mover advantage. And there is definitely a, a, an advantage to being the first mover. There are advantages to coming in a little bit later, but there are definitely advantages to being the first mover. Um, any advantage that comes to a firm because it exploits an opportunity before any other firm. So just think if you were the first company to create a laptop. If you were the first company to make that big uh, brick phone, cell phone that Zach Morris uh, used to have on Saved by the Bell, if you're the first company, no, ma no matter how bad the product is, everybody wants it, so so many people are going to buy it. Now, definitely, technology moves along very quickly, so you're going to have to you know, either keep up with the times or just take your money and run, uh, which you could do as well. But if you have that first mover advantage, you're going to get into the market, sell somebody's big, bulky, super huge laptop way back in the day, uh, but now you know, you go buy a laptop for, you know, four hundred two hundred dollars or something like that because anybody not anybody but you know a lot of people can can make them and they can make them well business plan is a document that summarizes the business strategy and structure right so if you want to be an entrepreneur you're gonna to have to come up with a business plan why do you need a business plan typically to get people to invest in your company now if you're giving it to somebody like a uh, at a bank or, or something like that uh, what you have to know and realize is that what they're really looking for is how are you going to pay us back if you fail? But as bad as it sounds, that's really what they're looking for. Uh, but you know, you put together a well-constructed business plan, you may get you a good chunk of change, uh, and uh, you know, get a lot of money. Uh, a great video that that I was uh, posting as well on Richard Branson, and he's you know, he owns Virgin Atlantic and he owns an airline and everything. In the in the story, I won't give it up, but you know, it talks about you know him uh, trying to get the amount of money to you know to fund his, the business that he, he was trying to go into or not, an additional business and and not being successful so even with somebody with that much money can still run into roadblocks when they have a solid business plan and solid uh financial backing uh and, and sometimes they still run into roadblocks as well so you know you know it's not uncommon for the rest of us to run, run into roadblocks because we don't have billions of dollars anyway uh starting a new business you know you got to read through the chapter look at that especially if you're someone who's interested in being an entrepreneur 
Uh, buying an existing business is always an option as well. You're still an entrepreneur. You're just buying an existing business saying, I can make it better. Maybe somebody fell on hard times and need to sell it to you. Maybe you're just interested in it. Maybe you know they're trying to sell the business and you're just looking through an ad and you've come upon it. So um, it's, it's a different way to do it. Also read about how to start from scratch. So typically that's if you've got a bright idea, right? I can make these pretzels or these cookies better than anybody. And so I'm going to start from scratch and I'm going to make my own business and we're going to see where it goes uh, from there. And there are also a lot of entrepreneur people within companies, right? They have great ideas, but they just work for corporations and they just give the corporations the ideas. Uh, so, you know, uh, it's not always just about, you know, somebody who, who works on their own. Uh, you know, strategic alliances, uh, you have to have those throughout your, your market. You have to network, you have to meet new people, uh, lenders. Um, you know, you're going to need to some money, whether it be a bank financing you, whether it's going to be uh, your family financing you, whether it's going to be capital venturous, or it could be just that you have a lot of money and finance yourself. Uh, so if you uh, check this, so this is good. You know, she's something that, that people definitely need because you talk about ergonomics and businesses and people going out on, you know, on sick leave because their back hurt, their neck hurt, their deaf car carpal tunnel. So Rebecca, uh, she's the founder and CEO of Neutral Posture, uh, makes a variety of ergonomic seating products. Her father developed a technology but did not have the expertise to commercialize it. So see, he's a good inventor, but she's a good person to, to market and get it out there. Uh, she used the personal savings and family loans to found to found uh, and to found what is now an international business, right? So uh, just think about that. Uh, you know, somebody had a great idea, but it would have never gotten out there uh, if she wasn't able to commercialize it, and and he definitely uh, was it. So. Um, you know, glad that worked out for them. Talked about these earlier, uh, but it's a venture capital companies, or you could just a venture capitalist, which is a person who has a lot of money, and they say, hey, you know what? I want to give you some money for you know for some shares of your company. It's a group of small investors seeking to make profits on companies with rapid growth potential, right? So it's like, hey, this guy's got a great idea, but he doesn't have any money. I'm going to give him money. I'm going to give you a million dollars, and I want you to give me back two million dollars in five years. Now, is that a great deal? Somebody say, heck no, you give them $2 million. But think about it. If I don't have the money uh, and I get, I need it from you and you just don't want to do anything, you just want your, your business to, uh, or your money to grow without doing anything. So, you know, we have a, a good relationship. And if I get my two million, my extra million dollars in five years and you've made much, much, many more millions on my millions, uh, you know, so you took my 1 million, you made 10 million, then it's a win-win situation. Uh, from there, right? So that's what you're always looking for in business. You're always looking for a win-win situation. SBA, uh, so Small Business Association Financial Programs, be sure to read that. Uh, something that, you know, if you are looking to fund a business, you will need to uh, check into. <clears throat> Small Business Administration is a great tool. Uh, SCORE, uh, this is really good. Uh, I would look them up, and I've shown this to people in my, you know, in-person classes. Look up Score. They have business plans. They have all kind of tools and tips and things that will really help you uh, in terms of uh, creating a new business. Uh, so, um, you know, so I always, you know, you know, t tell people, hey, you should, you should definitely uh, ch check them out and see what they have there. They even have a business plan template uh, that that's that's really well. So when I have, uh, you know, classes where people have to do a business plan as a uh, uh, as a project, you know, I, I steer them in that direction. Uh, networking. Uh, so more and more small business owners are discovering the value of networking, meeting regularly with one another to discuss common problems and opportunities, right? So meet with other people, you know, pull each other's resources, support each other's businesses. You have to network, you have to talk to people. I know some individuals just don't like talking to a lot of people or meet a lot of new people, but it's something that you definitely have to do. You have to get your business out there. You have to get yourself out there. You have to do like the politicians. You have to shake hands and kiss some babies uh, when you get out there uh, because you need to need to grow and network in terms of your of your business. Uh, franchising agreements, contract between entrepreneur who is a franchisee and the parent company, which is a franchisor. The entrepreneur pays the parent company uh, for the use of his trademarks, products, and everything. So franchise agreement. So like I said, entrepreneur, and I talked about this in uh, business uh, one uh, this week, um, you know, just because it's a franchise and something that's already established doesn't mean you're not an entrepreneur. You're still an entrepreneur uh, because your subway on one corner uh, may not do as well as my subway on my corner because my subway uh, has much better customer service. Every time you walk in, I'm like, hey, welcome to Subway. What do you want? I remember your order, all kind of different things like that. So I have more people coming into my to my subways a lot of people even come from your subway coming down to my subway so it is a you know secret ingredient is is you when you're an entrepreneur but uh but you know don't don't think that just because it's a franchise that you're not 
entrepreneur, right? Those things uh, do go hand in hand um, uh, when you talk about that. So trends in uh, uh, small business startups, right? So emergence of e-commerce, uh, obviously you have to know and understand that, you know, e-commerce has taken over so many businesses that can occur uh, through the, just the use of the computer. Uh, you just think about the different things that have changed over a lifetime, even that don't even have to do with computers. Let's talk, let's talk about a food truck. So to me, the food truck was the roach coach, right? You know, I used to work in a warehouse like way back in the day and it would come up and they'd be like, hey, we can go get these super surprise burritos and we could just hope that we don't get the super surprise and our stomach starts grumbling uh, about 30 minutes later. Uh, because, you know, we, we've been made sick by the, you know, by the secret sauce on the, um, you know, on the burrito from the roach, ch roach coat. But now they have guard these gourmet things, you know, he's like, oh, I'm going to follow the Koji truck and this, this and that. So uh, it, it's totally changed the connotation in terms of, you know, what that, you know, moving vehicle that has food on it is. Uh, business startups are successful and failures, um, successes and failures. Over the most recent 10 year period, which data is available, new business startups uh, number between 700,000 and 900,000 per year. That's a lot of new businesses. Uh, business failures during the same period, meanwhile, range between about 600,000 uh, to 950,000 per year. And that's a lot of failures. And so, you know, a lot of businesses do fail, but, uh, you know, it's good for people to still get out there, try your dream, try and go at it. But a lot of times, you know, say they, they say, oh, this percentage of businesses fails, but the people who go back that second time to try it again, they typically don't fail because they learned what they need to learn uh, from the initial uh, attempt at starting the business. <clears throat> so continue to go through that, talk about reasons for failure. So that's some of the things that you talk to about, you know, other business owners, people who have been in the market before. Why, why did your company fail? Like one thing that I was thinking about uh, before was, uh, you know, if a dry cleaner by my house was closing and they were closing after 40 years. And I was like, you know, that's, that's all they've been doing their entire life. And I was wondering, like, what does somebody who owns a dry cleaner do after, you know, their business had to close down? What exactly do you do? Do you go work for another dry cleaner? I, I don't know. You know, it's one of those, you know, questions that that I just, you know, wanted to know to definitely didn't want to ask them that. But it's just in, intriguing to know and wonder, like, exactly how does that, you know, you know, what do you do from there? Uh, reasons for success, read those as well. Uh, you know, you know the reasons for success and the reasons for failure are both very important because you don't want to have the reasons for failure occur and you do want to kind of, you know, put fuel on the one, on the reasons for actual success. All right, so that's the end of chapter five. Now to your summary of learning outcomes and key points. Go over all of those, go all of the supplements. Uh, make sure you uh, have a crisp and clear understanding of uh, everything from the chapter. Uh, be sure to do your homework assignment, take your quiz, anything else that is assigned, uh, possibly, uh, you know, your, your first test. Uh, and, uh, you know, the supplements at the end, definitely wrap it up uh, in a nice way so you can understand uh, exactly what the chapter is about uh, and kind of move forward with the, with the solid understanding uh, and take that into your quiz and your, and your test and, and do a great job, which I, oh, I know you all will. So as always, I want you guys to have a good and a uh, great, a good day, a great week in this uh, hot uh, California weather. Uh, not exactly sure uh, when, we'll, when it'll get any cooler, but uh, hopefully everybody stays hydrated. Keep your fans on and uh, have a great day.